Good morning, community. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Garden and Canning Recipes. A little bit of everything. We got to dig in to the sweet potatoes, and I got my helper here this morning, my sugar plum landing. Me. So we think that it's about time to see what we got. Let's see. So first, we got to get in here and start cutting all our vines out so I can see what's in there. So, as you know, earlier in the year, we harvested quite a bit from this one and from that one over there. And uh, we had the sweet potato weevils. And it looks like some of these are damaged by the sweet potato weevils. And I'll show you what they look like. If I can find one here. So here's one of the sweet potatoes that's damaged by the weevils. I'm gonna break it apart here and show you what they look like. They're pretty easy to break apart because um, you can see down in there, they're eating up the insides of them. So we're gonna go through our basket here and I'm gonna separate the ones that have the holes in them and uh, see if I can't salvage a couple. There's not many in here, guys, that's salvageable. We've never ever had sweet potato weevils until this year. So we really have to go back and see what we did differently. So the one thing we did different in filling up these tubs or these raised beds is we used some of that uh, wood mulch that we got last year when they were trimming the trees out here. And uh, so we're wondering, did something come up from that wood mulch? Another thing is, is we've been struggling with roly polies or pill bugs and that we've had that the last two years and I know a lot of you think that they're good and they're healthy and they're good for your soil and in amounts where um, it's a normal season they are but when you have an infestation of them like we've seen the last two years it's not good although they do help compost and uh, help your any of your vegetables to break down when they are in infestation then they are not good for your garden they eat everything and you can see and look there's those sweet potato beetles right there you can see they look like little ants so so what I'm gonna do with this raised bed here is I'm gonna sprinkle some diatomaceous earth on it. And I'm also gonna put some slug away in here before I plant anything else because I don't want my hard work to go by the wayside and prevent something from coming up because we need our veggies. So yesterday we were 99 degrees. It was awful. October the 13th, 99 degrees. I'm off today because it's uh, Columbus Day. And so trying to get some things done with this cooler air. And I think Thursday we're supposed to get down, I think to like 48 during the evening time. I'm excited about that. So let's check on our onions. You can see they are looking quite well. Really excited about these. I'm gonna let them get a little bit bigger, probably till at least maybe mid-November, maybe a little sooner, depending on how big they get. And then I'm gonna transplant them probably in the big high tunnel in a row, but this is how I decided to start my onions this year. So we've cleaned out all these tubs from the herbs and I'm gonna have to get in there and mix it around because I see some herbs trying to come up, they reseeded. And these guys, I'm gonna put some carrots in and I'm gonna do that pretty quick. And uh, you're just gonna do the broadcast spread just like I did the onions. You're gonna take your, your carrot seeds and Make sure your dirt is broken up. I'm gonna add some fresh soil to it, some fresh organic matter, and then I'm gonna broadcast spread. I'm gonna water them in, and you gotta keep them watered. You gotta keep them damp, um, especially until you start seeing them sprout up. Then you can start to back off, but you can see here, I've got some things, some, looks like some herb seeds trying to come up, but this is some pretty good soil. I just need to add a little bit of organic matter to it. We still have some herbs going and some peppers going in this little high tunnel. 
I'm letting them start to go to seed so I can harvest my seed for next year's planting. And my green beans are looking fantabulous out here. These are the Contari beans. And here's the deal that I seeded. Um, some of it came up volunteer and other I seeded, seeded it because a deal does real good as a companion plant. But these, these green bean plants are looking fantastic. And I really expect that I'll start seeing some in the next couple of weeks. But they are loving it. They are loving the cool nights. Although we've been hot during the day, they are getting some really nice cool nights. And here is some of the cilantro I seeded with it. So we got some cilantro coming up. And there's some more deal. So some of my tomatoes are starting to come back. You can see they're flowering out. These cool nights are helping them. These are my black cream. So I hope I get some because I love my black cream tomatoes. Bell peppers are finally starting to come in and produce. So we got quite a few bells. Looking good, looking good. Mustard greens are coming up, and looky here, I got some chewers, and I bet you that's army worms. But here's some of our paprika peppers. We have been making loads of paprika. They have done fantastic. And this raised bed up here in the front. Oh, and they're just a beautiful, beautiful pepper. I've not planted anything in this one yet, guys. I know I told you I was going to do um, broccoli, or not broccoli, but uh, cabbage. I've not done that yet because we've been so stinking hot. I mean, we have literally been in summertime temperatures and maybe this week could be more conducive to planting some of my cool weather plants in here to see what happens. So what will the winter bring us since we're kind of getting a late start to fall? So I was reading something the other day. It said something about the polar vortex or something was not doing what it normally does. And because of that, it could cause the jet stream to go a little wonky and uh, shoot some colder air down our way. Now, previously they were uh, saying we were gonna have a mild winter, mild and first they said wet, and then they said mild and dry. So I really don't know what we're gonna have. Um, I don't think the La Nina pattern has really kicked in as much as they thought it was gonna be, which is what brings us really cold temperatures in January and February, but it also brings us very dry weather. And we really need rain. We did get some good rain. I think around September the 20th or 22nd, we got about three inches of rain and we needed it, but now we're in a high fire risk. And so we've got, uh, we've been putting the sprinklers out and you can see everything is still, still green, just like if it's summer. And um, this is our first really good break of cool temperatures other than the first week of September. You may remember we dropped down into the 50s, but then boy, did we jump right back up. However, after that, our nighttime temps stayed in the mid 60s, which is uh, really, really brilliant and really good to help some of our tomato plants that have stayed in the ground uh, maybe kick back in. We're not seeing a lot of them do it, but uh, you saw my black crown are starting to do it. So if the polar vortex thing is true, and because we really don't know what to believe anymore, do we? If the polar vortex thing is true and it's not developing like it normally does, it could bring us some uh, really, my sugar muffin, could bring us some really uh, cool or cold temperatures, which I would welcome. We need some cold temperatures to kind of kill off some of these insects. But guys, it's just, we are hitting eight months out of the year where we're hot, 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 hot. And maybe a, co maybe a couple of weeks where we're mild and, uh, and then we kind of go into winter and our winters here in Texas are not that bad, although there are certain days or certain weeks that can get really cold and really bad. But other than that, our normal highs are in the low 50s. And so it's not, it's not that bad until we get maybe an Arctic front. So we'll see what we get. So I'm gonna wrap up some things around here and I wanted to get this video out to you and show you what's going on with the gardens here in North Texas and I just tell you I love you and that we will see you soon.